Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. For those of you who may be listening to the show for the first time, I always say good morning, afternoon, and evening because we are live on iHeartRadio, and I never know what time zone somebody is in who's listening to the show live. And we also go to podcasts, and we're listening to around the world in over 30 or 40 countries now. So I never know what time somebody is listening to the podcast. So I want you to be welcomed at whatever time you happen to be tuning in. For uh, those of us in Florida, where I I am right now, it is in the morning. It's 11 a.m. in the morning, and it is always my favorite joy of the day to be here with you. No matter what's going on in the world, for me, this is my happy place where I get to share with you some of the best and brightest and occasionally some of the funniest minds around to help you with your business, to help you with your life, to help you figure out what's next, and to unlock that amazing person you have inside. And I'm excited today to have Tom Antion back on the show. The last time he appeared on the show was April 26th of 2017, where he talked about search engine optimization and a lot of other things. He is a friend. He is a mentor. He is somebody that When I'm certain what to do, the first thing I do is go listen to his podcast, Screw the Commute, or I just go on his social media to see what he's doing because whatever he's doing always has a pulse on what's happening in the world, and typically he's ahead of the curve. Um, And he always makes me smile. So, Tom, welcome back to the show. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here, (laughs) Uh, Laura. uh, i got to tell you. Something, uh, and this is uh, something that will also help your listeners tremendously. But just this morning, I put some uh, an ad on Craigslist to sell some stuff. Craigslist, like the oldest selling kind of app, you know, we have really? Facebook Marketplace and Offer Up and stuff nowadays. But but uh, uh, they're also got the most scammers on there. So I put, if you put your phone number on there, folks, uh, expect to immediately get back something that says, I'm interested in buying your thing, is it still available? And you say yes. They come back with, well, you know, I got scammed before. I want you to prove that you're who you are. And they're trying to steal your Google Voice uh, account is what they're doing. So, so knowing this, don't ever click on a link or do anything that they say. But <laughs> this morning I was just messing with them, and I, uh, <laughs> I was selling a table or something. <laughs> and, and when they came back and said they were interested – uh, I started talking back to them with language that's a little bit off for for their country where they're probably doing this from. So I, I, re, I originally came back with said, well, you know, I, I also have a, a hot air balloon, <laughs> a, a unicycle, and a moped. Are you interested? <laughs> and, so, and then and then I and then I started using off language like like uh, what. Uh, mode of transport do people in your fair country uh, use when traversing hill and dale? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, then, and then I said, I said, I gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I remember that when that first came out. Uh, and they came back and said, listen, I'm going to send you a code. <laughs> they, they couldn't understand a word of it. <laughs> So that went on back and forth for a while until they finally figured they, they're not going to scam me. But, but you know, I have a, a TV show on development in Hollywood called Scam Brigade because there's just, you know, we're surrounded by some of these bad things, and I hate to see anybody get hurt with them. Yeah, I mean, as long as I've known you, you're, you're the Internet millionaire guy next door, right? I mean, and you have made it your mission to make sure people don't get ripped off that the scammers get found, and beyond that, your mission in life is to help people make money legally and with integrity on the Internet. And the stories you have are amazing. If a lot of the scammers, I mean, some of them are brilliant people. If they would just channel it into good stuff instead of ripping people off, you know, they wouldn't be being chased around and sued all the time. But, uh, 
But yeah, so I, I couldn't stand that seeing, uh, you know, I, I grew up, uh, you know, in a small town where you did what you said you're going to do. If you didn't, the whole town would come down on your head, you know, so, <clears throat> so it was a situation where I, I could see people getting taken advantage of and, and I knew I had the power to do something about it. So that's how the, the show came about. It, it always amazes me how many people get scammed with what seem like some pretty obvious things. And I, I never understood how that could happen, but yet being in tech, I understand how easily it is to have it happen. People are trusting. Well, yeah, and there's an old saying in the scam community that says, if you think you're too smart to get scammed, I want to meet you. Because they can manipulate, I mean, all they do all day long is figure out how to manipulate your mind in certain directions so you don't see how you're getting killed in the other direction. So you're up against professional level con people and sociopaths. So, so uh, yeah, you got to be extra careful and learn about the scams so that you recognize them when they're right in front of you. Now, a lot of people who are doing business on the Internet think that they can't be scammed. <laughs> yeah, well, like I said, the scammers want to meet those people. Right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, now, one of the uh, things that like Tom you're smart, known for, I mean, the smarter you are, uh, <laughs> the smarter you are, the easier it is, actually, because people know that they can make your mind go certain places. The The less smart you are, it's, it's like you, you can't go along with their agenda because you can't follow it. But the smarter you are, you can, and they're leading you down the path. But, uh, but uh, you just be careful. Don't click on things. Don't. I mean, there's a thing on Facebook where say, oh, Laura, I can't believe what Tom Antion said about you. And they want you to click that link. And as soon as you click it, you're, you're had. You've been had. You know? so, so just be extremely careful clicking on anything that somebody asks you to click on, unless you absolutely know them and you know it's from them. In fact, I get a lot of things that have somebody's name that I recognize but it's, there's no real message there. It's just, hey, Tom, click here, you know, and <laughs> there's no way. They, basically, they got their email hacked, and somebody's using their email to forward uh, scam um, or scam or malicious uh, emails with links in it that will give you viruses and Trojan horses and things like that. Well, with so much of that happening, I mean, I, I look at all the stuff on social media, all the advertising for the clothing, for the this, for the that, um, all of the surveys that people want you to take, what's your favorite band, you know, this, all these things designed to detect personal information about you, right, so that they can then get to your um, financial accounts and different things like that. Why would somebody want to try to make money on the Internet then, legally? Well, because there, there's plenty of legitimate ones. It's just that the, the scams kind of, um, uh, you know, it's like the squeaky wheel kind of thing. You know, there's, you know, there's millions of legitimate vendors online selling things, doing things ethically, uh, but you hear about the, the scammers. Uh, so, yes, it can hurt you really bad, but if you develop the reputation of giving good quality service and you start getting good quality reviews that people believe in you and trust you and you treat them right, then you can have a really wonderful business, a lifestyle business, and you wouldn't have been freaking out when this pandemic hit a, a while back. And I know this, these things have a long life, but uh, we're recording it kind of midway into this pandemic thing. And People are freaking out and wanting to work from home, and this is a very low-cost, high-return way to do it. And as long as you're honest, you'll attract honest people, and you'll put in the, you'll learn how to put in the proper protection so you don't get robbed and send send uh, products to people that didn't really pay or stole the credit card. I mean, for instance, you can see your in your shopping cart once you get a little experience, you see a weird order come in that people don't normally order and a free email address and a phone number. And when you call it, it doesn't work. And, you know, you, know, you don't ship any products. And, and a lot of the projects are digital anyway, so you're only losing some electrons rather than going to the post office and shipping an uh, expensive product until you really confirm that it's a real order. But, you know, I've been doing this 26 years, 
And the percentage of trouble I've had is infinitesimal. I mean, it's just tiny, but you, you do have to be aware of it. And, uh, you know, people like me teach you what to watch for, and it's very, very little trouble with that. So if somebody's on, in business on the Internet right now, what, to, what should they be looking out for? Well, uh, like I said, a weird order, like something that they don't often sell or two things in the shopping cart that kind of don't go together. Uh, if that's the first thing. Then uh, immediately you look at the email address. Is it a free Yahoo, Hotmail, uh, or Gmail? Is there any, any free email address? And then you look at the phone number, and if you have any question at all, you just pick it up and call them. And you'll get usually uh, the number doesn't exist or uh, voicemail, but just don't ship anything until you, when you have those signs, uh, don't ship anything until you actually make a, a contact with the customer by voice. If it goes that far, chances are, oh, it was just looked weird, but it was real. But uh, most of them don't. Most of them die right at the phone number uh, area. I remember when I had my tech services company, we would randomly get these large orders for toner or for computer equipment that mm -hmm. would come in via email or other methods, and they always seemed really odd. And like you said, as soon as we tried to reach out via phone or even email them back, you immediately got these really strange replies that they couldn't maintain consistency throughout mm -hmm. the conversation. Yeah, and the weird, uh, like the, the one guy said uh, in, in this thing I was just laughing about earlier, he said, hello, H-A-L-L-O, and then he says, I just massaged you <laughs> a code. <laughs> so I said back, I said, oh, uh, you offer massage services. We usually get those happy endings from the Chinese place. <laughs> he came yeah. back with a, with a, uh, I'm sending you the code. That's all they want is somebody to click on that code. Right. And, uh, you know, so those are pretty obvious ones. Some other ones that are very uh, common are that somebody will say, I'm sending you a check to pay for, you know, a big ticket item, maybe a TV or a car or something, a cashier's check, they say. And then uh, you're selling the car for 3500 bucks. They send you a check for 5500 bucks, And then they say, oh, well, I sent you too much because I wanted you to pay the, um, uh, use that money to pay the, the shipping service. And there is no shipping service. He's the shipping service. So you send a good check back to him for like $2,000 for the shipping of the car. And then he cashes it. And then you finally find out that his check was no good. So... You, you just lost 2000 bucks through a, uh, a check overage scam. You know, so there's, there's, there's very common in, the, in the, uh, the, the Jamaican lottery scam. I mean, people, I think uh, when I was developing the show, I found statistics like 20,000 people in one year, older people lost their home, uh, uh, elderly people from the Jamaican lottery scam, where they tell you that you won the lottery and, okay, trust me, folks, if you didn't play a lottery, you ain't going to win a lot. <laughs> yeah, down. but it's amazing how yeah. many people just don't put yeah. two and two together with that. And, and older people, too, and, and, they, and then they tell them, well, you have to send the, uh, uh, the taxes in ahead of time, and that's where they steal your money. But they're even more insidious in that they're using Google Earth to look at your house and scare you and intimidate you. Like, you're the house with the red door, right? If you don't send this money, we're, uh, we're going to come over there. And it scares the heck out of people, and they're afraid to report it to the police. And, you know, so, so it's a, a multi-billion dollar business out there of uh, uh, robbing people. But, but uh, for the most part, if you just know the signs, you can stay out of it, and you can have a great online business and, uh, and serve a lot of people, which is what we're here for. Okay, so let's talk about that because right now um, lots of people are wondering, will they be able to go back to work? Do they want to if their offices open up? You know, how do they cover the income they've lost? How do they protect their families so this doesn't happen again? And, and I, I get this pretty regular from my listeners, which is why I'm so glad we were able to get you on the show today. Can I, do, can I make money on the Internet? I don't even know where to start. 
these are people that maybe have been working for other people, can't even think about something they could possibly sell on the Internet. And then also some businesses that were just brick and mortar and they don't even have the first idea, how can I shift, pivot my business to something that's Internet? What would you say to that? How do they go? What do they start doing? Well, the first thing is, is... uh, one of the big benefits of selling online is that it's extremely high gross profit and very low risk if you know what you're doing. So you have a lot of profit margin to deal with, especially with digital products and information products. And so you can make a lot of mistakes and still stay profitable. Most brick and mortars are lucky if they bring bring 5% down to the bottom line after killing themselves all year uh, to do it. So, so you do have a, a big profit margin to deal with. I mean, digital products like ebooks and so forth are 97% gross profit. I mean, you have to really try to mess up right at 97% gross profit as long as you develop something that people want. And then the next question will be, well, I don't, what do I know that people would pay for? Well, Virtually anybody that's an adult that does anything, including hobbies, knows something that somebody else will pay for. And I, when, it, when people come to my retreat center, there's a table. I can see it from where I'm sitting here. It's six feet long and three feet high, stacked with tennis training videos. Do you still have that tennis. website? Yeah, fatsotennis.com. <laughs> <laughs> so... So I developed a tennis training video for overweight and out of shape people that love tennis. All right? So, so that makes all my. I was going to talk today about uh, making your hobbies legitimately tax deductible, so you can enjoy what you're doing for work and get tax credits and actually earn money, which makes you not feel guilty about taking the afternoon and playing golf if you've got a golf website. Now. A lot of people say, well, what do you mean you've made a DVD and stuff? Well, I happen to have the dubious distinction of being the largest person ever to create and star in a tennis training. (laughs) But but you don't have to have a product because of the concept of affiliate marketing. So that means somebody else has a product and you promote it. And if somebody buys it because you promoted it, you get a commission. And so you can have affiliate products on a golf site or a quilting site or a soccer site for your kids or any. There's thousands and thousands of family interests and hobbies that can can, uh, work with this along with typical business training, sales training, customer service or leadership, whatever your expertise happens to be in. And you can do both. You can have a business site and a hobby site, or or many of of the above. Say, I have the 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 tennis site. I have a protection dog site uh, where I take orders for protection dogs, pass it on to the professional trainers, and take a commission on it. Say, so that makes my dogs as models for the site tax deductible. And I'm not an attorney or an accountant, but I've had hundreds of them. You've seen me speak before. I get, I, I say, hey, is this a good idea, folks? And all the attorneys say, yeah, that's the way it works. You know, you, as long as you're legitimately trying to make money, you get tax deductions and tax credits for this. So, so the, the point is, for where to start, is think about what kind of information product could you create that somebody would pay for. And we always start with PDF eBooks and then convert it to Amazon Kindle eBooks. So PDF eBooks you can get more money for, and everybody has Word or, or you know word processor converted to PDF, and now you have a product. And and Laura, you can even get uh, write an eBook by just interviewing other experts on stuff. I mean, so um, the the main thing is to get some high profit products that are under your control. It's your intellectual property. And then you promote them, or either other people will promote them for you, too, and you give them a commission. So uh, that's where I start, is is developing some products or finding affiliate products that you can promote for commission or sell directly if it's your product. Okay, so say somebody had um, a brick-and-mortar clothing store. No, actually, mm-hmm. let's let's take it back even further. 
a restaurant, and restaurant and restaurant workers have really just been decimated with this whole pandemic and the stay at home. What are some ideas that you can give for them to maybe start with just, you know, they've worked at restaurants or they owned restaurants or they're chefs? Let's just try to throw some stuff out there. Okay, so that's good. And I do want to uh, tell you a story about the clothing uh, thing that I ran into one time. But, but anyway, so it's food-related. All right, so you have a lot of spinoffs there. You've got uh, nutrition. You've got weight loss. And uh, you've got uh, wellness. You've got recipes. And you say, well, yeah, recipes are free. Well, here's, here's one thing people have to keep in mind, Laura. Everything that I've ever said in my entire life is for free somewhere on the Internet. You pay me to put it in one place for you, okay? Think, think in those terms. Everybody here is, that's listening has bought a book on something that they probably could have researched and for hours and hours and days and weeks and figured out the same stuff. But it was much easier to give the guy 20 bucks or the lady 20 bucks for the book, right? So, so that's what we're talking about here. You can research things. In fact, um, you can actually create a book and have no knowledge at all about the topic. I was flying from uh, L.A. to Charlotte one time. I'm in first class, and sitting next to me is a guy looking like he's maybe in his 40s. And in the seat pocket in front of him, he's got all these go-kart magazines. And I said, hey, buddy, what's, what's all the go-kart stuff? And he said, oh, man, I love it. Me and my boys race him on the weekends. I got three boys, and, and uh, he was just all excited about it. And I said, well, how much does one cost? And he says, oh, man, you can't get a piece of junk for 10 grand. I was like, 10 grand for a go-kart? Are you kidding me? He says, yeah, ours are about 30000 a piece. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yeah, yeah, exactly what I'm thinking. All right, so I'm thinking four go-karts. There's hundred and twenty grand. If they race them, they probably got extra tires and engines and and they got this big giant hauler to haul them in and a monster truck to pull it. He's got hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up in go karts. Yeah, nothing so, like what we used to make as kids growing up. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like it was more like Fred Flintstone go karts. What I had. So, so I thought, what if I wanted to write an ebook on how to buy your first racing go kart? Well. Here's what I would do. There are things online, a lot of people have been to them, called forums or discussion boards. And these are places where people hang out to talk about a specific subject. There's every subject on earth, including pig farming, has a discussion board. So I would go to a a racing go-kart discussion board, and you can see how many postings a person has made uh, on the side of the screen. So I would go to all the senior members that have you know, posted thousands of times, and I'd say, hey, I'm writing a book on how to buy your first racing go-kart. Could I interview you? How many do you think would turn you down? Zero. Yeah, that's all they do all day long is talk about racing go-karts. Um, how many people, uh, how much would they charge you to, for the interview? Probably nothing. Nothing, yeah. They'd be so thrilled somebody asked them. Uh, who do you think would help you promote the book because they're so proud they're in it? <laughs> Every single one of them. Exactly. Who gets all the money? I do if I wrote you it. Do. That's right. You do. They they wouldn't even ask for any. They wouldn't even think. You'd be the publisher of a racing go-kart book that you had no knowledge on earth of what it was about. <laughs> uh, now you do after all these interviews. But then uh, Perfect way to go into the national news, Tom. Everybody, I'm here with Tom, inter, Tom uh, Antion, the great internet marketing uh, school retreat center, a friend, a mentor. Welcome back, everyone. If you're just joining us live on iHeartRadio, you missed a great first half of the show. I am here with Tom Antion. You know, he's never had a job, a traditional job as anybody's known it. He's an internet multimillionaire, guy next door. He has a licensed, dedicated Internet marketing school in the country. He does a lot of work with veterans. Um, He's the real deal, everybody. He's a friend. He's a mentor. And I understand, Tom, that you're the subject of a Hollywood documentary coming out, The American Entrepreneur. I mean, okay, I did not know that one recently. But we've been talking about 
how people can take their hobbies and family interests, make them tax deductible, how they can pivot their businesses. I mean, Tom, you've been doing this forever. Well, yeah, it definitely beats working for a living. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I live it, I live it, and love it. I mean, it's a beautiful lifestyle business. You you can, uh, you only have to deal with people you like. You don't have to deal with people you don't like. And I, and everybody's freaking out, calling me when the pandemic hit. And I'm like, what? What happened? You know, I'm sitting here. I've been sitting here for 20 years. <laughs> What's the difference uh, to me? So uh, a lot of them said, well, I wish I'd have listened to you 20 years ago. I said, yeah, I'll bet you do because. Uh, it didn't uh, life didn't change for me because of the pandemic or or family sicknesses or illnesses or or any kind of thing because it's um, you know you have a worldwide market uh, right from your desktop. Now before the break we were talking about some different ways people can pivot their businesses, um, how they can create information products to sell on the internet without even knowing. I loved your go cuts cart story and some ways that restaurants and restaurant owners or people that work there could pivot. And everybody, you can always catch the show on podcast anywhere your favorite podcast platform is. Um, you mentioned that you wanted to say something about clothing. Yeah, you mentioned clothing real quickly, and I immediately went to this um, uh, buying app. You know, I, uh, re- I opened the show with uh, talking about buying and selling on Craigslist and offer up and all these places. So I was on Facebook Marketplace and I was buying some tool off of a guy. So because uh, I buy off of him too, so you had a lot of good bargains. So so I go to his house. It's a beautiful house. He's got this half a million dollar RV out front. The lawn is perfect, and he takes me inside and he takes me down to his workshop. And everything he's normal looking. Everything's perfect. But as we go into his workshop, I'm looking to the side, and there's like hundreds of bras hanging up on clotheslines. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, so now I'm thinking, oh, man, did I walk into some weirdo? And so I'm, I'm, I buy the tool, and he's real nice. And we're talking about how my dad got it started with tools. And he's to- totally normal. So on the way out, I say, you know, i got to ask you, <laughs> you know, what's all these bras hanging here? And he said, oh, yeah, my daughter uh, goes to thrift stores. She knows all the thrift stores and all the odd size bras. And she buys them from the thrift stores, cleans them. And she's pulling about $200,000 a year on eBay. <laughs> Selling bras that people have turned Selling into thrift shops. Used bras with odd sizes. And all the thrift store people know her. She Once a week, she goes to the thrift stores. And so, two hundred grand she's making selling used bras, and and a friend of mine, Lynn Drawley, um, uh, was a single mom. She took about eighty to a hundred bucks a week to yard sales. I love yard sales and flea markets. Kind of grew up with that stuff, and uh, she ta- and then she goes out to eBay on her cell phone, and if she sees like a Tonka truck or something, she goes and sees what it's selling for on eBay, and maybe it's selling for five bucks at the yard sale. So, and maybe it's selling for 50 on eBay. So she buys it. And then she's, she ended up clearing about $1,100 a week from a you know, $80 to $100 investment just on eBay. You know? So there's all kinds of ways to, to make money. with. And she had no website. eBay supplied all that. See, So there's loads of ways to make it with no website. So, so definitely there's opportunity online to make a, a really substantial either main living or side hustle. I do want to put a caution out there to everybody. Now, Tom, you have to understand, is very capable of taking care of himself. But if you're buying something from somebody you do not know, I don't recommend walking into their house. Of Would you course. agree with that, Tom? I carry a gun. And uh, now there is... Um, uh, a lot of the police stations are allowing you to use their lobby and parking lot to make deals now for Craigslist and eBay and things like that. And you do have eBay uh, stores now where you can have them handle the transactions for you. So, yeah, absolutely, uh, you got to be careful with this stuff. Right, not only online with accepting orders or, or buying something, but also physically if you're going to pick it up or allowing somebody to pick it up. Just please, everybody... Be be careful. The world is a little crazy. Um, even but before see, I, everything. I was thinking about getting into that bra business. I wouldn't mind if I got attacked. If somebody... <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my God! All right, so <laughs> let, let's talk about some of the some of the ways. I, I know we talk, we said we were going to talk about how to hire young savvy people because there's a lot of people out there that don't know how to get started, what to do, how to how to do the marketing. They can come to your school, which, by the way, how do people find out about your school that you have? Yeah, yeah, we'll have it. Uh, it's it's Internet Marketing Training Center of Virginia. It's imtcva.org. And it's distance learning. I mean, we we will be having in-house classes for the uh, uh, veterans, but but uh, it's distance learning. So anywhere you are that you can get an internet connection, if you can speak English, you can attend the school. So it's imtcva.org. But I want to tell you about one of the young ladies that's in the school. Her dad uh, gifted her a scholarship to the school after he had spent eighty thousand dollars on a traditional school. And she was only working some crappy job because, you know, I mean, competing for a job at Starbucks, basically. And uh, after one month, and then I'll tell you exactly how she did it. After one month, she was up to $1,100 a month. Uh, two months, she was up to 3000 After four months, she was up to $6,000 a month, quit her other job. And the way she did it was she really dug in on learning to be really, really good at social media. And she offered to take it off the back of small business owners because every business on earth knows they need social media, but they are really clueless of what to do and how to do it. So they were begging her to take them off for, I don't know, how many hundred dollars a month. And it took her a very uh, short amount of time. So she's handling customers all over the country now. And uh, it's growing like crazy because she's doing a great job for them and hiring other people to help her. So that's a way you can, if you're really savvy with social media, you can almost make money overnight because so many businesses are uh, are clueless about it. And it's something that she hadn't thought about doing ever before. No, she was, uh, like I said, she, she had gone to uh, some... I don't know if it was general studies or, you know, the kind of the things that you can get out with a degree uh, in nothingness. <laughs> you have a degree, but you can't do anything. So uh, I just feel so bad, but uh, it was a hard lesson uh, for her uh, dad, 80 grand. But um, this is, a, we turned it, helped turn it around with this, uh, you know, our school is all skills. It's not any kind of big theory that's going to get you, uh, you know, art history, and there's nothing wrong with art history, although we're losing a lot of our history uh, lately. But uh, the thing is, is people want people that can do things that are valuable to them, and they will pay for it. So that's uh, totally what we concentrate on. Okay. That's, I love that. I, you know, Well, you know, I love you. I love the work that you've been doing for years. Um, I, I, I think the first time we met was back – in 20, 2011, I think, was the first time we met. And I've watched people who have been through your school. I've watched people who, you know, I've referred over there um, to work with you directly because it's something that, that you do. You can work one-on-one -on -one with Tom, everybody, if you're uncertain what to do. Um, I want to talk about somebody that you groomed, you hired back in high school, who mm -hmm. I just think the story is so amazing. And I just want people to think about the story about Sayu, not necessarily that this could happen for you, but the whole idea that any idea you have could generate enough money to take care of you and your family or beyond. Um, Pluto TV is, if anybody's following any of the stuff that's been happening with the streaming services, Pluto TV got created by a dad, somebody that you hired originally when he was in high school, who then just ran with the skills and different things that you helped him with. And he sold Pluto TV to Viacom for $340 million. He started it just because he couldn't find content for his two-year-old to watch on TV. Yeah, and I told him, next time I come out to L.A., you're buying dinner, too. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I recruited him out of Comp USA. He was on his way to being just a corporate person, you know, just get a job in the IT department. And uh, and I I begged him. I said, uh, 
listen, I'll teach you how to start your own business. You come and work with me for a while. And and thing is, is it wasn't all benevolent for me. It's the fact that I want you to have young tech savvy people with you because something that would take me all day to figure out, he had done in like seconds. And and so that really accelerates your business and helps you uh, concentrate on the marketing and the selling and the creation of products, but you're not fighting with your computer all day long. In fact, he would watch me work at my computer, and he would be, get so frustrated. He was a little smart aleck Russian kid. <laughs> he said, I can't believe somebody's making, so much, somebody's making so much money so stupid. Just click here. <laughs> and was, he was always right, so I let him abuse me. But uh, he worked with me for years, and you'll see in Forbes magazine, he gave me the credit for uh, starting him off in business and teaching him all this. And that was his third startup. He started a web design company, sold it for a million and a half, started an greedy, online greeting card company, sold it for six million, and then this one he sold for 340. So, uh, so I'm, yeah, thrilled to death with him. But this, yeah, maybe you're not going to sell a company for $340 million, but every one of you, can influence a young person in your life to show them that they don't have to be dependent on a, the, the dreaded J-O-B. They can take ideas, make them work on the Internet. I mean, there was a guy making $7 million a year just sitting playing video games. And there's little kids making a fortune on, um, on YouTube just playing with toys. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's millions of views on these things. So... Uh, so, yes, you can do that for sure, any one of those things. So what's the first step for somebody? They, they have an idea, and they're like, I want to go online. I know we talked about there's ways of like being an affiliate for other people's products and creating a site for that, and you get referral fees. But somebody has an idea of something that they, I can create this, this information product what, what do they do? What are the steps? Well, the first thing they do is open up a Word document or some word processing document and lay out the skeleton of a book. Pick any book off your shelf and look at it. You've got a title page, so you stick a title page in your Word document. You've got a table of contents. You put that in there. You've got a copyright page. You put that in there. and You make this whole skeleton of the book, chapter one, two, three, even if you don't have the chapters. Yeah, chapter one, two, three. Conclusion. And there you've got a skeleton of an ebook right there in front of you, even if it has no content at this point. Then you can design an ebook cover. We use a, a site called Fiverr, F I V E R R dot com. For five to twenty bucks, somebody will make you an ebook cover or a graphic of your ebook. And then here's a really cool trick. You know, most people don't think up of a unique idea that's never been thought of before. And if you did, maybe there's no market for it. So if you come up with something like I did with tennis, there's a big market for tennis. So you go to Amazon and you type in your topic, tennis, golf, archery, quilting, you know, whatever it is, and other books will come up. And here's what you do. Cool is the coolest trick there is. You click on the look in the book. You know, they always let you look into a little bit of the book. And there's the table of contents. Somebody else thought up all the things that should be in your book. Right? So you just copy down all the different things that other authors have put in their table of contents, and they roughed out your book for you already. And then you put your two cents worth in, you, you go search the Internet, you interview people, and you just start filling in the book. And before you know it, you'll have an ebook. And and uh, and I happen to know about a topic, but I've had an ebook that I wrote in four hours at a layover at McCarran Airport in Las Vegas that so far has brought in $3.6 million and anywhere from six dollars to $15,000 a month for four hours investment. And so this is a speed to market with potential upside that's really enormous. So just as skeletonize your book and start filling in the blanks. Do the books have to be long? You know, everybody asks me how long they should be, and here's, uh, I refuse to answer that question. Here's the answer to that question. You want the book to be so good that people say to themselves, wow, I can't believe I got so much value for so little money. 
That way, the next time you, you come up with a product, they buy it automatically because you gave great value. That's why sometimes I don't even write a sales letter anymore. I just tell somebody, hey, I just my new book is done. You want to buy it? And they say, yeah, because they know if my name's on it, it's going to be good. So now if you do have something really short, here's a good a tip for you. Don't call it a book because you'll get bad reviews immediately on Amazon. So you don't want that. Call it a special report. Call it a white paper, and you can sell it just fine. But don't call it a book and, and make expectations that it's going to be a really in-depth, long thing. And then they get three pages, and now they're mad, and they leave terrible reviews. So call it something different if it's really short. But try to make it great and forget about how many pages it is, because you can manipulate that with the font size and the white space and graphics and so forth. Just make it great. Think in those terms, and you've got a long career ahead of you. Okay, so now somebody's created something. How do they start getting it out there and letting people know about it? And I know we can't cover this in like the eight, nine minutes left of the show. Got it. Yeah, so, so there's a couple ways. One, you could uh, go to places like ClickBank or JVZoo where there are tons of really serious uh, affiliates that know how to sell online, and you give them a commission. It's typically 50%. So if it's a $17 ebook, they make $8.50, but you didn't lift a finger other than them you know, selling it for you. Uh, now, you do have to have a website, and I don't want you to get ripped off on that. You can build a simple WordPress website with a simple theme on it for about 150 bucks. Don't let anybody talk you into 1500 or 3000 for this. And uh, this is where people would come to buy it, and you can start collecting the money just simply with PayPal. We want you to expand from PayPal in the future, but just to get started, PayPal is fine, costs you nothing. Okay? So for you know, very little money just for the, the website, you can have other people selling it for you. Okay. Um, PayPal, everybody, just so you know, they do take a percent of the transaction fee, just like using any kind of credit card. So I know it's free to get started, but there are some fees that they take. So ClickBank, JVZoo, PayPal to get started. So then basically if you're doing it that way, you don't even have to be savvy with social media or anything yourself because you're relying on these other people to promote your products for you. What if you want to do it yourself? If you want to do it yourself, you have to uh, get traffic. And so there's, there's various ways to get traffic. One is you could make YouTube videos to catch people and then send them to your, to your website to purchase. Uh, you could do really good blog postings. You could be really good at social media. So there's lots of opportunity out there, but you have to develop the traffic. But then you get to keep all the money, say, other than, like uh, Laura mentioned, the percentage that comes out. And even if you have a, a merchant account with full-blown merchant account, there's fees whether you sell anything or not, plus a percentage. But, you know, you have to have that. Those are tools to be able to sell online. Nobody's going to mail you a check, all right? I mean, maybe once out of, you know, a million customers. So you have to have that to collect the money. But I'll tell you what, when you wake up in the morning and you see this money in your email, you're like, man, my Wheaties are going to go down easy today because of that. So, and I mean, it's literally, and it sounds hocus pocus, it's literally you're making money while you're sleeping. And, and it's, uh, I'm not saying there's no work involved. You actually have to do this. You have to promote. You have to learn how to drive traffic and so forth. But the thing is, is that money is, uh, can come in whether you're sleeping, whether you're sick, whether you're on vacation. It doesn't make any difference, and that's the real beauty of this, and it's not hocus-pocus. I love it. Tom, I want to make sure that everybody knows how they can reach out to you. You have tons of resources and, and products as well, but you have tons of amazing resources. What's the best way for people to reach out to you to get help? Well, they probably should get on my podcast, ScrewTheCommute.com. Every Monday I do an in-depth training on something that's either made me or saved me a lot of money. And on Wednesdays and Fridays I interview great entrepreneurs like you, Laura. And, um, 
And then if you put slash resources, it leads you to all my products and services, a lot of, a lot of free stuff, a lot of free webinars, a lot of uh, paid stuff, uh, you know, for people that are more serious and really want to get going. And then uh, and it'll lead you to my school and everything else. So if you just go to screwthecommute.com slash resources, that really, you know, you can find everything I got. And you need to get on that podcast because uh, I want you to screw that commute. That's why. I, I love your podcast. And uh, as my listeners know, I write for Podcast Magazine. And last month mm-hmm. I, I actually mentioned, even though I write for a technology category, I actually mentioned your show because it, you just have so much great, material on there that is so accessible and and that's what people always say about you tom is you're accessible you're real this is not high level theory stuff you break it down in a way that people can actually begin right away to use the techniques to shift their life and as you say screw the commute yeah i'm not getting any younger i want to be able to make money fast so last thoughts <laughs> you want to leave my listeners with. Yeah, and uh, one of the things I promised on your Facebook post was that if you do this correctly and really do it, and again, this is, sounds hypey, but you really couldn't stop the money coming into your checking account if you tried. Because if these things are out there working for you 24-7 and people are buying them, they download the stuff or go to an online course you've created or whatever, and the money goes directly to your checking account. Like I said, you can be sick. You can be hurt. It's like an insurance policy for your family, uh, yourself and your family, that uh, any kind of the things that have happened in the world now are not going to uh, put you under. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be something – that's going to save the world, although that's wonderful if that happens. I mean, you've got Fatso Tennis out there. You've been making money off of that. Fatso Tennis World. Forever. And it, it's wonderful, and it's fun to just go up there and, and watch the stuff and see all the different things that you're doing. So why yeah, wouldn't... I did, save, I did save a bunch of Fatsos. I'm not fat shaming because I'm, I'm one of them. So, so I saved this from uh, the whole goal of that site is to run the, the younger, faster people to death before you drop dead. <laughs> there you go. It makes a huge difference, right? So yeah. find something, right, that, that you know, because I, I love this one thing you said that, um, you know, it's not that they can't get the information maybe I know for free somewhere, but it's you putting it all together in one place. That's the thing. I mean, yeah, if you're willing to sit down and, and uh, you know, like I have a professional speaking system. Yeah, if you're willing to spend years, you know, interviewing people, watching people on stage, practicing your own technique, and then putting it together, good for you. <laughs> yeah, create the shortcut that everybody wants. Yeah, yeah, so... Uh, so you'll be in high demand if you can help people shorten their learning curve and get to their goals uh, uh, faster. Uh, Tom, I want to thank you so much for uh, being on the show today. And, and again, the, the website that everybody can go to? Screwthecommute.com. And then uh, you can sign up for the podcast. And then if you put slash resources, that brings you to all the webinars and all kinds of stuff I got for you. I love it. And, um, you know, you do a lot for the military and for animals and, and for human beings on the planet. So I first thank you for that. You're welcome. Good all right, everybody, you. remember the right question can change your life. What are you asking today about what your next step is and what you can do to take care of your family or no pandemic? me all about life is stuff that tom was talking about be you be happy make you've been listening to it's all about the questions starring laura Stoker. connect with laura at it's all about the questions.com and download a free workbook that will help you ask better questions starting today